So this morning we're looking at Moses, it's our third part, um, it's the end of this current short little series looking at the life of Moses. Lots to pack in there and, and if you've been journeying with us or getting our emails or watching our YouTube or Facebook, you'll, you'll have been caught up, hopefully. So a final week looking at Moses discovering God's faithfulness along the journey of life. So discovering God's faithfulness along the journey of life as we consider Moses' life and story and as he journeyed with the people of Israel. Let me pray. Father God, this morning as we just take a few moments to open your word, I pray that indeed we will hear afresh from you once again. Maybe quite familiar stories, maybe quite a familiar character in your word, that of Moses. But thank you, Lord, that we can see your hand at work. Thank you, Lord, that we can gain you insight into his life and his faithfulness and our faithfulness. That you are a God of new beginnings. That you are a God who sees and watches and guides and leads. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we're going to pick up the story at the Red Sea crossing. That's it, the triumphant thing. Red Sea crossing, there's Moses standing there as you can see. We've survived the plagues, we've survived the Passover, we've survived the back and forth between Moses and Pharaoh, the toing and froing, the sadness, the plagues, the death, and now Pharaoh has lost his workforce. The Red Sea crossing is an event cloaked in mystery and wonder. It's the story of God delivering his people out of bondage and setting them free. The Exodus stands as one of the most important events in the Bible as the story of redemption and rescue is unfolding in God's word. It's Exodus chapter 14. We're going to read a few verses there from 21. If you have a Bible or up on the screen or some sort of device, it will be there for you. Exodus 14. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And all that night the Lord drove back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The water was divided and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground and a wall of water on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued them and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of cloud, of, of fire and of cloud at the Egyptian army and threw them into confusion. Isn't that amazing? The Lord looks down. He jammed the wheels of their chariots so they had difficulty driving. Who loves a wheel jamming God? Anyone? (laughs) He jammed their wheels. And the Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. And the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the, Israel, over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at daybreak the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing towards it and the Lord swept them into the sea. God's promises. Are faithful. God promised to be faithful and to protect his people for all generations. Friends, we too are held in God's hand. Life is not without pain. Life is not without suffering or death. Life is not without setbacks. And if you take a time to share a story, I'm sure we could have mentioned some of those things this year. Or doubts or uncertainty. All these things are part of life. But God is still with us 
and on our side. God remains close to us and walks with us into each new situation. I hope that encourages someone here today. A word for you today that God remains close to you and walks with you into every new situation. God will sustain us and uphold us and then graciously receive us at the end of our journey. He will open up the road before us, part the waters and lead us to safety. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if this year has brought you uncertainty and anxiety. I'm sorry if you felt misplaced and that where you once found you belong felt a bit unfamiliar. I'm sorry if life has brought you heartache. I'm sorry if you have felt misunderstood. I'm sorry if you've suffered loss. I'm sorry if you lost someone who, was, who really mattered to you. I'm sorry if you've experienced confusion. I'm sorry if the days have felt long and the year has felt like it's never going to end. Anyone? But we serve a God of new beginnings. We serve a God who watches over us, protects us, guides us, cares for us, as he did for Moses and his people. Over in Exodus 16, verse 2 and following. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, If only we died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you brought us out here in the desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Oh, we used to sit around pots of meat. How quickly they forgot. How narrow-minded we can sometimes become. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. And in this way I will treat them and see whether they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day they are to prepare what they bring in, and that is to be twice as much as they gather on the other day. So friends, within several weeks have passed, they've left Egypt, the people are murmuring and muttering and complaining against Moses on a number of fronts. Some people love to mutter and murmur in the church, I'm sure you don't know anyone like that, do you? Muttering, murmuring people, oh that's not the way we used to do it. There's none of those people here, praise God. Or you're hiding. <laughs> Moses must have had a difficult time. Do you agree? It wasn't easy. Keeping this massive group of people going in this wilderness. This writes complain against Moses. When the Egyptians were chasing them, they complained when they were thirsty, they complained when they were hot, they complained when they, they were hungry. They don't, don't complain, uh, excuse me, where are the toilets? They simply would not trust Moses that he was led by the will of God. That God spoke to him and he spoke to them. They'd crossed the Red Sea on dry land and seen the Egyptian army drown. Now God would act in a very special way. God was going to feed them and teach them about his nature. Manna. What is it? Loosely translated, that's what manna means. What's it? What's that? Moses told the people simply, 
This is the bread the Lord has given you. It's Exodus 16. Then the Lord said to Moses, I've heard the grumbling of the Israelites. I reckon it should say again and again. Tell them at twilight, you will eat meat. And in the morning you'll be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. They needed reminding again. That evening, chicken nuggets covered the ground. Oh, sorry, no. Sorry. That evening, quail came and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread the Lord has given you. Meat and bread. Now the Israelites did not always comply to all the instructions. Some of them took more than they needed. They tried to store it away in case there's going to be no more manna the next day. But overnight that manna became rotten and foul and did not last. Friends, the people were forced to learn to trust the providence and provision of God. And I don't know about you, but 2020 has been the year where we've needed to trust the providence and provision of God as we journey through life. Trust in God. He will be there for you. Trust Him. As we finish this morning, I love this passage in Hebrews 11. By faith. Our mate Moses. By faith. You may know this passage well. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw that he was no ordinary child and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasure of sin. <coughs> he regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as the greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. His eyes were fixed beyond his current situation. By faith he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the application of blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land. But when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. By faith. By faith. God will meet you at that crossroad. By faith. Through the frustration, through the concern, through the worry, through the doctor's report, God will meet you there with his comfort and peace. By faith. As we journey through life, remember that he does not leave us or forsake us. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.